Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Virginia Martial Arts Center lecture class. And today's lecture is on our dojo philosophy. So I hope you enjoy the class. Take good notes, because some of this stuff you will might just see on a written test someday. So you definitely want to try to uh, try to see what's going on here. All right, and try to get to know this stuff. Some of this you are definitely going to know, but we're going to explain. I'm going to try to explain it in much more detail so that you un really understand it. And if you've got questions, unmute yourself and, you know, ask a question. That is fine. And we will try to get as many questions answered as possible. Okay, so first and foremost, what is philosophy? Philosophy is kind of like a way of life. It is a way of thinking about life, a way of uh, it, it is a, a, a set of moral principles that you live your life by. So what is your philosophy of life? How do you, what do you believe in? What do you trust in? Uh, what is your, what is your goal and you know how are you working to achieve it so a lot of things can be your philosophy so our philosophy is our belief system in what we do in a dojo of course our dojo dojo means the place of the way place of the way it, or it, as most people refer to it it's a training hall for martial arts our training hall for the way of martial arts so we're going to talk about our place of the way philosophy today all right now first of all let me say to everybody happy world karate day how many people knew that was today today is happy world our, our world karate day and that was set forth by the world karate federation back in 2017 after karate had been uh, put into the Olympics for 2020, which now, of course, has been moved to 2021. But uh, World Karate Day is, is something being celebrated around the world, so we should celebrate today. Yay, okay. Now, first and foremost, we want to start with the idea that, as we know, karate begins and ends with respect. And a lot of times we have been saying karate begins and ends with courtesy. Uh, that was kind of how Soki Kuniba worded it, but I'd like to word it with respect from this point on, because that's what it is. It's not just being kind to somebody or whatever, it's showing respect. And it was very interesting this past weekend, I was at a little family gathering and you know, people were doing the social distancing and people had masks and that kind of stuff, but they were trying to like, you know, give it the elbow instead of shaking hands and that kind of stuff. And I said, wait, hold on, I, I've got this. In karate, we have been doing social distancing for centuries, because what we do is we bow. Okay, and everybody went, that's cool. <laughs> and everybody in the in the party, a little party we were having started bowing to each other. <laughs> so I think I started something. So that was good. So yes, we've had that whole social distancing thing going on for a long, long time. Now, uh, the karate begins and ends with respect was actually something that Master Anko Itosu, who was one of the founding fathers of our, our karate style way, way back. He was a teacher of Choki Matobu and a teacher of Kinwa Mabuni. And he was, uh, he, he was a lot of things. And one of the things he ended up doing was being a school teacher. And he was very instrumental in trying to get karate into the Okinawan school system. And he's the one, he developed the Pinyon Kata. And he was uh, trying to make it so that karate could be taught to children because it was such a good uh, system of teaching kids how to be uh, good people as well as just good karate people, okay? Um, I'm trying to mess with this thing here. There we go. Okay. Now, let me get this back. Okay, I'm trying to get my grid straight here. Get my grid. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's back. All right, now, so we adopted this. Uh, Soki Kuniba used to preach it a lot, you know, uh, very, very important to be respectful. His 
philosophy of karate was always about good manners and being a uh, having a good heart. So that idea of seishin, of pure heart, was extremely important to him and to his father that taught him karate. And I kind of want to go over this because we see so many people, they take bowing for granted. They take it for granted and they don't do it properly a lot of times. So when you come, when you do a karate bow, you of course want to come to Kiyotsuke, feet together or the heels together. You want to keep your hands by your sides. So your hands shouldn't be flying around. They shouldn't be, you know, flinging out to the side. Hands should be down. Back should be straight, which is what a lot of people do wrong because they bow with their head instead of bowing with their back. Okay. So you should bow from your your hips and your whole back should stay straight as you bow. Uh, some of you have been in class where I've stuck a bow down my belt and you put your the bow against the back of your head and across your back and then you try to bow without the bow leaving your head and if you do that you will have a very straight back as you bow but if your bow if the bow leaves your head or i should say your head leaves the bow then you're not bowing with a straight back so you it might be something you try stick a broom down your back and see what happens <laughs> okay arms remain by your side bend at your waist arms and fingers together heels together your toes are out so this is the proper way to bow so if you're bowing improperly you're really not showing proper respect in other words you're not taking the time and the energy to show respect properly so that's very very important is trying to bow correctly all right and if we're going to do it do it right if something's worth doing well then do it well okay now Matsumoto, Soken Matsumoto was actually a teacher of Itosu, and he had this to say, which is very, was a very good um, uh, thing, and he said, to all those who progress remains hampered by ego-related distractions. Let humility, the spiritual cornerstone upon, upon which karate rests, serve to remind one to place virtue before vice, values before vanity, and principles before personalities. Now, there's a lot in that little sentence there, okay, in that long sentence there. Okay, so let's kind of break it down. Basically, what he was, was saying was that you've got to empty your mind. You've got to, when you're doing karate, you've got to forget about everything that happened today. I see a lot of times people come in, you can see that worry on their face or they're mad or they're upset about something or whatever, you know, and that's going to get in the way of your karate training. Okay, that's going to be foremost in your mind and you can't focus on the karate training because you've got this other thing that is in the middle of your head and it's, you know, showing in your body and in your actions. You've got to get rid of those distractions, get rid of those things um, and forget about whatever happened today, whether it be in school, whether it be at home with mom and dad, whether it be with your brother, your sister, cat or your dog, you've got to forget about those things and leave them outside the dojo. And then you let humility, which humility is, you know, being humble. We're, we're not going to be, have a big ego. We're not going to be a show off. We're not going to be a braggart. Let the humility, which is extremely important in, in karate, like he says, the cornerstone of which, upon which karate rests. So this is a, like the foundation of what, what our philosophy in karate is about. Let that serve to remind one that we need to put our virtues before vice. In other words, put our beliefs before any habits or any, you know, hangups that we have. Uh, we've got to put those aside and remember what's important. Remember what you believe in. Remember what is right. Virtue is your belief in what is right. Okay. Then put your values before vanity. Okay. We all need to have good values good moral values we hear that a lot good moral values are having 
morals about. In other words, morals are the thing that we believe in. It's the, the good things that we want to live our life like. So we want to put those values before our vanity, okay? Before, you know, being um, too vain, too, uh, too much about ourselves. You know, we got to wor quit worrying about ourselves so much and what we gain. Uh, a lot of times I tell uh, students, you know, they say, oh, well, I don't want to do that or I don't want to, you know, I, I'm having problems with, forget about it, okay? It's not about what you want to do. Life is about what you have to do, okay? I don't want to have to go to work. Okay, I'm not going to work, okay? Or you say, eh, I'm not going to school anymore. All right, well, sorry, but you have to do that. Otherwise, you can't live, all right? You can't, you know, pay the bills. You're not going to have a house. You're not going to have a job. You're not going to have money. You're not going to have anything. And you go, you know, live off the street and be homeless, okay? So we got to put our values first before worrying about ourselves, all right? And then principles before personalities, okay? A lot of people, they come in, they're like, hey, I'm bad, I'm, I'm the best, I'm, you know, I'm this, that, the other thing, okay? You can't have, you can't worry about being, you know, the highlight of the party if that is a bad principle, okay? If you are putting other people down, if you are, you know, uh, cutting people down, if you're trying to, you know, make everybody laugh, you know, with you about stuff, but you're, you're doing something bad to someone else, in other words, you're hurting someone else's feelings or something like that, that is not a good principle, okay? A good principle is to be helpful to other people, to build other people up, to make them feel good. So we don't want to put our personality before our principles, okay? We don't want to worry about being the, you know, the big, the big guy on campus or trying to be the big show off or whatever. We want to make sure that we have good principles. And if you do, you're going to have a great personality, okay? You're going to have, you're going to be a person that people love to be around, okay? So remember all this. Uh, this is this is a great, great thing. Now, we had, uh, or I had years and years ago, um, a I had a gentleman named Ridgely Abel, and he was a Hanshi. He was a ninth degree black belt. And he was, I, I can't say he was one of my teachers, but he was one of my mentors, okay? In other words, um, I learned a lot from him, okay? But I wasn't a student under him all the time because he was in South Carolina and, uh, you know, of course, I'm, I was up here. But I met him, I think it was in 1990 or 91, he was at the time the USA karate head coach for the United States karate team, all right? So a lot of people knew who he was because he was a famous coach. Well, the, some of the people that were, you know, uh, uh, kind of the head, head folks in Virginia decided to have him come in and do a seminar for our athletes. Now, I was competing in those years, so I was like, yeah, oh, gosh, head coach coming. I'm going, man. This is going to be good, okay? Well, I got there, and this he was – really very scientific kind of teacher. He really broke karate down into scientific principles, but he was a great teacher of the moral principles of the virtues and the values of karate as well. And he would sneak these lessons in about the virtues and values all during all this scientific part about the karate, you know, and I learned a lot that day. That, that day, that uh, seminar was eight hours long. Now, one of the things he did during that seminar, which you guys will love, is he said, now we're going to work on muscles and we're going to work on particular muscles. Matter of fact, we're going to work on our punching muscles because punching and karate is so important. So now what muscles work your punches? What muscles help you punch? And people say an arm, you know, the back muscles. And actually, it's your chest muscles. Okay, your chest muscles are the ones that pull and push and really support those. Now you got your arms, you got your shoulders, you got your back. 
back. You got everything's involved, but the major muscle group are the are, are the pectoral muscles. Okay, the the chest muscles. So he said we're going to work the chest muscles. All right. So every ten minutes, I'm setting a timer, and every ten minutes, we're going to do push-ups. And I'm thinking, eight hours. We're going to do push-ups for eight hours every 10 minutes. This is going to be a long day. <laughs> okay. And it was. <laughs> so about every 10 or 15 minutes, that timer went off. And guess what we did? We did push-ups. Now, we, he changed it a couple of times, and we did some, a few other uh, 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 drills because our arms were falling off. But we did, I can't tell you how many push-ups that day. Because what he was doing is saying, okay, now, when we do push-ups, we're going to do as many push-ups as you can do in one minute. So every 10 minutes for eight hours, we did as many push-ups as we could do for a minute. So that was a lot of push-ups. I mean, a lot of push-ups. I can tell you that my chest never hurt so bad as it did the day after that because it, it was tough. But he proved a point about if you want to have good punches, you got to have good push-ups because it's the same muscles, okay? Pushing up is the same as punching out. And so he, you know, he was really, like I said, very scientific teacher and really uh, would hammer his points extremely well. But anyway, he had this thing, a few things that he would always say in class, and we have borrowed them into our philosophy and our dojo as well. Um, one of those things he would always say is virtues before vice. And we just said that he took that, borrowed that from uh, Matsumura, from that same saying. So he just took that piece and said, you got to have your virtues before vice. you got to have your principles before personality. And this one I loved. He said, leave your ego at the door. All right, leave your ego at the door. Now you may think, well, I don't have a big ego. Well, you know, everybody has an ego. Everybody does. If you hadn't, did not have an ego, then nothing that anybody said or did would ever upset you. It would never hurt your feelings. Because if you don't have an ego, you don't have feelings. Oh, wow, that's, that's an interesting point, isn't it? Okay, your ego is how you feel about yourself. Okay, and some people have a big ego about themselves and some people don't, you know, some people are more humble. Okay, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be humble. If we have a big ego and we do karate, we could be a kind of a mean person or a, even a bully or something like that. Okay, if you're trying to prove yourself to everybody, you know, uh, go around picking fights or you, you know, go around just giving people a hard time or showing off or whatever, that would be that would be bad. But what he was talking about as far as ego is that we have to leave the things that are about us outside the dojo. Okay, we can't come into the dojo mad, upset, having a bad day, bad mood. We can't leave. We can't bring those into the dojo because they are going to interfere with our training and other people's training because other people are going to see that in your face and in your actions. And it's just going to be a bad day for everybody. So you've got to leave your ego at the door. And I, I say that from time to time myself, especially when I see somebody, they come in and you, you obviously can tell they've had a bad day. All right, leave your ego at the door. All right, now, our dojo ethics, our dojo principles, all right, we have uh, several of them. And we say this, this all the time. Karate begins and ends with respect. Okay, we're changing courtesy to respect. So remember that. Karate begins and ends with respect. All right. Second one, we are responsible for our behavior. All right. Whatever you do, you own it. Okay. If you do something good, you own that. You did a great job. If you do something bad, you own that too. All right. And it takes being able to admit when we've done bad behavior 
to really have proper values, okay? Because uh, if we have bad behavior and we, um, let's say we, you know, did something wrong and we don't own up to it, okay? Then you're gonna be lying about it. You're not gonna be trustworthy. You're not gonna be a person that other people can depend on. So we have to be responsible for our behavior. It's like I, I say to people, you know, say people are picking on, kids are picking on each other, okay? I say, whose hands are those? They're yours. Who controls those hands? You do. You're responsible for the fact that you're picking on that that other person's being picked on, okay? So, you know, whatever we do, we're responsible for because we're the one in control of our body and our mind and what we say to other people. So we have to be responsible for our behavior. That means we got to be careful about our behavior. We have to be kind to other people in what we say and what we do. So think about the things you're going to say to somebody before you say them. How many people have ever ever said something and, and gone, oh, I wish I hadn't said that, and you wish you could grab it and pull it back, okay? We all have, yep. Haleen's raising her hand. Caitlin's raising her hand, okay? We've all done that kind of thing, all right? But what we've got to do is we've got to think first. We've got to put our our principles before our, our uh, I mean, our, we got to put our uh, principles before everything else that we do. So we got to be careful about it, okay? Um, actions have consequences, and we know that, right? Whatever we, uh, whatever we do, like I said, whatever responsible, whatever behavior we have, there are consequences for whatever actions we have done through our behavior, okay? So if you do good actions, you get good consequences, right? Okay, if you do bad actions, there are bad consequences. And you've gotta be ready for them. You know, you gotta say, oh man, I goofed up, okay? But what you wanna do is you wanna say before you make those actions, what are the consequences? If I do this, what's, the problem? what's gonna happen, all right? Right now, we're having a lot of problems, you know, in the United States, of course. We've got people protesting, which is fine, okay? It's an expression of their rights. But then you've got people who are looting, people who are, you know, they're, they're destroying property, they're burning things, they're, uh, they're, you know, they're just doing bad stuff. Well, I can guarantee you some of those people will get away with it, some of them will not. A lot of them will not, because a lot of them are on video. Okay, I saw I saw the other day, guy. He's coming out of a store and he's got a TV under his arm. He's like waving ah like this, you know. And I'm going, dude, that's going to be used to find you, and they're going to arrest you, and you're going to jail. Okay, and it, it, believe me, it happens. The police will be after him. Okay, so you know, you got to think first of all. Okay, you're stealing something. So, you know, that, that's a crime. Second of all, you're breaking and entering into a, into a business. That's a crime. Third, you're showing people you did it. It's not too smart. Really not too smart. Okay. All right. So now there is no excuse for bad manners. All right. It really isn't. Okay. Bad manners just means you're not thinking. Okay. Or maybe you haven't been taught some of the good manners. All right. We, we all should know how to be a good person and have good manners. One of the biggest things I tell people is you've got some very important words that you need to make sure you use a lot. Okay. Please. Please is a huge word, okay? May I please do this? May I please have that? May I please help you, okay? Please is a huge and very powerful word, and people will respect you for using it. The other one, thank you, okay? Thank you for what you did. Thank you for, you know, helping me. Thank you for, you know, teaching me something. Thank you so much for this, for that, the other thing. Those words, please and thank you, huge words. Another one, a good, again, good manners, and it shows respect. That first one, quite a big incident with respect, is yes, ma'am, yes, sir, no, ma'am, no, sir. Okay, 
we forget about those so easily and forget to use those words. And you know what? I use them with people who are the same age as me or older who really, I really should say to, but I also say it to everybody. I say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Okay. Because it shows respect and it's just good manners. Okay. And guys, <clears throat> Guys out there, I'm going to give you a, a good manners that's going to be extremely helpful to you, okay? If you're old enough to date or you're going to be old enough to date a girl one day, all right, you ready for this? Hold the door open for them, okay? Seriously, don't go running in by yourself and, you know, have them coming in behind you. Hold the door open for a lady, Okay, if you like this person and you want to impress them, always hold the door open for them. Okay, and you should do that for older folks and anybody can, you know, just be nice about it. But I will tell you that I have been, uh, I've been in a relationship with Shiandai Donna for goodness gracious, it's been how long now? 10 years? No, 11 years, 11 years. Okay. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, I open the car door for her, for her to get in the car and for her to get out of the car, okay? Why do I do that after 11 years? Because I still respect her and because it's good manners and I'm treating a lady with respect, okay? And I will tell you, that impresses a lot of people, okay? We've been in parking lots and people have seen me do it and, they, and uh, a lady will go, whack hit her husband and say, why don't you do that for me? Okay. <laughs> so I, I've gotten a few people in trouble with it too, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> it's a reminder. All right. And last, what's the last one? Anybody remember? We lead by example. That's right. We lead by example. Very important. We've always got to set a good example. All right. It, especially as a karate person, if people know we are karate people, then they know, they should know that we have good manners, that we have good behavior, that we're respectful, and we'll always set a good example for others because we have these principles in our dojo. So we lead by example. Now, those who are leaders in class, you're leading and you're leading white belts and yellow belts and you know lower belts than you and you're becoming a mentor to them you're becoming someone that they look up to if you're doing your best as a leader okay if we're in class and you know we're all doing punches and i'm strong punches up front okay and you're in the back kind of blah 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 again doing your punches you know kind of halfway is that setting a good example no because the white belts and lower belts are going to try to copy and emulate you. And if you're not doing a good job, are they going to do a good job? No. So we've got to lead by a good example. All right. Okay. So let's go on to the next thing. So the next thing is, of course, our student creed. And I think we all know that. So number one, I will develop myself in a positive manner and avoid anything that could reduce my mental growth or physical health. And that talks about a positive manner. We're trying to develop ourselves. We're trying to make ourselves a better, more positive person and develop ourselves in a positive way because we're doing it through physical training, through this mental training that we're talking about right now. And then, of course, we want to avoid anything that could reduce our mental growth or physical health. And, of course, that would be stay away from things that are bad for you, smoking, drugs, you know, uh, too much candy, you know, eating bad, drinking too many sodas, you know, things like that. But also things that could reduce your mental growth, okay? In other words, stay away from negative people, people that are making a bad influence, that are setting a bad example, okay? You don't need to be around those kind of people. You need to be around people that are positive, that are trying to help you, that are trying to help you grow and become a good person. So 
you know, sometimes that's, you, you got to cut loose some of the people that are the negative influences in your life and also negative things that you do. So we may all have some bad habits, okay? When we want to get rid of those bad habits because they don't help us physically, they don't help us mentally, all right? They're a vice that we're stuck on and we don't want to be stuck on bad habits, all right? Number two. I will develop self-discipline in order to bring out the best of myself and others. Self-discipline, I like to think of as self-control. In other words, having the control over yourself to do the things you're supposed to do without somebody else having to tell you to do them. So we're using our self-control to be in charge of ourselves, all right? We've all been in the situation, every one of us, that we've had to be reminded to do some chore or duty or homework or, you know, some something around the house, uh, whatever it may be, we've all been had to be reminded. And that's discipline. They're having to remind us to do that. Okay, but if you do it yourself, then that's self-discipline. And that's always better. It's more fun to do it yourself. It's more fun to have the, uh, the, the discipline to say, oh yeah, I need to make my bed, let me do that. All right. Um, then for mom or dad to come in and say, hey, you didn't make your bed. You need to make your bed before you come down for breakfast. OK. And then you're like, oh, brother, I forgot to do it. Damn, now they're yelling at me or whatever. OK. So what's what's better? What's more fun? Discipline, somebody uh, having to get on your case or self-discipline where you just do it yourself because you're supposed to. Self-discipline, I think that's pretty easy, all right? But it brings out the best in yourself. You know, I was watching a gentleman who was a former SEAL in the United States Navy, and he was doing a speech, and his speech was starting out talking about why you should make your bed every day. Now you think, well, make my bed? Okay, make your bed every day because that's the first task you will accomplish for the day. And what's going to happen is after you do that task, then you're going to do another task and complete it and another task and another task. And by the end of the day, you will have completed a whole bunch of tasks because you started out with a good habit of making your bed. Sounds pretty simple. Sounds maybe overly simple. But then he had a really good point. After you've done that throughout the day, you come home, you're tired, you've accomplished a lot, and you get to crawl into a nicely made bed. Okay? <laughs> And, you know, he's got a point. He's got a point. You know, if your covers are all mangled up and everything and then you get home, what do you got to do before you go to bed? You got to kind of undo them and, you know, kind of get them halfway straight before you climb into bed. But if you had made your bed in the morning, you just have to lift the covers up, slide in and good night. So uh, and also don't forget that. Good self-discipline brings out the best in others, okay? So if you, you know, make your bed in the morning and do whatever other chores you need to do, your parents are pleased, right? Your parents are pleased. You're pleased. So it brings out the best in yourself and others, okay? All right. Now, in number three, we know, of course, is I will use common sense before self-defense and never be abusive or offensive. Now, this is me mainly the idea you got to use your head in a self-defense situation. All right. The gentleman originally able that I was talking about earlier, Hanchi Abel, really, really would use his head in a lot of situations. He was in a situation one time where he was at a, um, a gas station pumping gas and, you know, some guy was, uh, you know, pulled up and he's mouthing off and he's just, you know, obviously not having a good day. Anyway, he goes into the little, you know, convenience store, Hanchi Abel went into the convenience store and Hanchi Abel, you know, gets his stuff and he goes up to the counter. Well, the other guy is up there and he's got beer and he's got 
uh, cigarettes and he's complaining to the uh, the person behind the counter, the cashier, about how much it costs. So I can't believe you're charging me this much for a six pack and cigarettes. He said, that's ridiculous, blah, 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 blah. You know, just mouthing, mouthing. And Auntie Abel kind of taps him on the shoulder and says, sir, if you gave up both of those bad habits, you'd save all kinds of money. <laughs> okay, and the guy kind of looked at him like, huh? Oh, you know, and he grabbed his stuff and paid for it and, and went out. So Hans Abel was like kind of proud of himself because, you know, he tried to get this guy to think, you know. Well, he goes out to the gas pump and this guy's out there waiting for him. And the guy says, you know, you, you think you're a hot shot. You think you're mad, that kind of thing. He says, I'm, I'm ready to punch you out, that kind of thing, you know, being mouthing off at me and all of a sudden. And Hans Abel calmly said, uh, sir, you, you want to fight? He said, yeah, I want to fight. I want to fight. Really? Wow. He says, well, man, that's pretty cool. I do that every day. This is going to be fun. Okay. And the guy was like, oh, man, forget it. Okay? And the guy left because Hanji Abel used his head, used some psychology against the guy. And the guy was like, had to double think it. It was like, oh, I, don't, I don't want any part of this guy if he fights every day, you know, trains to fight. So that's using common sense, you know. The other way we can use common sense is just avoid situations altogether, okay? If you see something happening, you know, and you're thinking uh, some little voice in the back of your head is going, you know, that's probably a, not a good place to go, okay? Or those guys, you know, they look kind of rough, you know? Or that looks like a group that, you know, might cause trouble. Go around them, go a different way, go across the street or whatever. We've got to use our common sense to make sure that we don't get ourselves in a bad situation. My own mother, years ago, now this was back when I was like a yellow belt, okay, or the equivalent of a yellow, yellow belt. I had been training in karate. Actually, I was a little higher than that. I was, I was uh, uh, been training karate about a year. And my mother went to the store. Now, I was home. She went to the store, and she came out of the store right about closing time. And as she did, she saw three guys, kind of older teenage kind of guys, hanging around, you know, kind of on the side. Well, it's kind of a direct line to her car through these guys. And she thought, you know, maybe I should, you know, go way around them or go back in the store and just wait until somebody else comes out. And she went gosh, that's not going to happen to me. Nothing's going to happen, you know, that kind of thing. In other words, the old adage, it's not going to happen to me. And just like people say, I'm not going to get the COVID virus, you know. So anyway, and I know that's a whole can, another can of worms. But anyway, she said, all right, I'm going to just walk on through. She got past the guys, and the next thing you know, boom, she is on the ground and being dragged, okay, because the guy, one of the guys came up as she passed him came up behind and grabbed her purse and yanked on it well her hand went it was over her shoulder went down to her purse and it pulled her off balance and she landed on the asphalt and she landed on her purse and the guy's dragging her dragging her dragging her and she's screaming and yelling and um, then the uh the purse uh, uh the um strap broke and somebody came out of the store and started yelling at him and they took off. So fortunately, she didn't get too seriously hurt. She was kind of scraped up and bruised up a bit, but she could have avoided it if she had listened to that little voice in her head that said, you know, maybe I should go back in the store. Maybe I should go way around them or something like that. So listen to that voice, okay? Because when that voice kind of sneaks up behind you and says you need to be careful okay listen to it okay that doesn't mean we want to be paranoid and walk around going oh gosh that guy could attack me or oh gosh that guy could attack me but we want to be cautious we just want to be cautious okay especially in these times when you've got all this you know rioting and things going on 
be cautious, okay? All right. And we never want to be abusive or offensive, okay? So abusive, you know, that can be abusive physically, it can be abusive mentally, it can be abusive emotionally. We don't want to be abusive. We don't be, want to be offensive to other people. We don't want to, you know, uh, make people feel bad, okay? Don't tease them. Don't, you know, hurt their feelings, okay? Do stuff to make somebody feel good. All right. And you do that, it's going to come back and it's going to make you feel better too. All right. So let's go into the next thing. Now, the next thing is the dojo motto. Okay. We all know this, or we all should know this. Okay. The dojo motto is where is it? Here we go. No whining, no complaining, nothing negative, no matter how tough it gets. Seven times down, eight times up, never give up. That's our dojo motto. So what are we saying? Nothing negative. We don't want to whine. We don't want to complain. Remember what we said about leaving that stuff at the door? That's what we're talking about. And, you know, you get into doing an exercise and it's hard. No whining, no complaining. Okay, just do it. Give it your best. Give it everything you've got, okay? And you're going to be better because of it. You're going to be stronger because of it, okay? If you give everything your best effort, you are going to be an amazing person mentally, physically, emotionally. You're going to be somebody amazing, okay? But if you just whine about things, if you complain and you make excuses and, you know, negative comments and give up so easily on tasks, you're going to have a very tough time through life. All right. You're going to have a tough time getting a job. You're going to have a tough time trying to get ahead in that job, get promotions. Okay. The positive people, the hard workers are the people that get promoted, that get higher salaries, that, you know, make, make a good living and have great, great positions. So you've got to make sure you work at everything that you do. work at your schoolwork, work at your, you know, your job, give it your, your best. Okay. We have had an opportunity here at the dojo where we're looking we were you know the covid thing was just getting started back in early march and we looked at it and we i was like you know they're talking about maybe shutting things down this kind of thing what are we going to do immediately when they shut things down what do they do close schools okay well a great chunk of our revenue, our income, is from our after-school program. And guess what happened to that? It was gone. It was just gone. There was nothing we could do about it. It was gone. And it's been gone ever since. And trust me, that's been hard, okay? It's been difficult. But we could have sat back and said, well, let's wait. If, let's wait. You're talking about being closed two weeks. Let's wait and see what happens. And, you know, just kind of uh, take a little vacation, you know, because, you know, I mean, that was discussed. Should we just take a vacation? Okay. And I was like, no, that is not what's going to get us through this. And within two days, we were online. Now, you remember what it was like, okay, <laughs> doing this online from my house and, you know, all the pro technical issues and things like that if you were with us. But we made it through it. We made, you know, get, we got better and better and better and better at it until now, you know, we're looking pretty professional, okay? And it took a lot of learning. It took a lot of effort. It took a lot of work, okay? I guarantee you I've been working harder since the day we closed up than I've ever worked in my life at this dojo, okay? It worked extremely hard, long, long days, trying to make sure that we are going to get through it. And so never giving up, making sure that we are making a positive move, not whining, compl complaining about it, because there's nothing you can do about it. Because there's nothing we can do about the situation, we can't do anything about the pandemic. But what we can do is what matters is what we do because of it, how we respond to it. So when things happen to you, and they're not always going to be good things, you know, bad things happen to people, okay? This pandemic happened, okay? It's not about what happens. 
It's about how you respond to it. It's about what you do when things get tough. And that's what this is about. That's what our motto is about. Okay. So it's my job to make it tough on you because suffering making you work, making you suffer through some of these classes and making you work hard is what builds your character. Okay. So many times I've seen where people have, uh, and, and I mean, I've, I can think of a few examples right off the top in my family where kids were given everything. They were given everything. They never had to work for anything. They never had to worry about chores. They never had to worry about, you know, getting a job to support themselves through high school. They never had to worry about, uh, you know, all, all these things, all, the, all these little things. And you know how they turned out? They can't do anything for themselves now. Okay. They're afraid to give, make a phone call, you know, to find something out. They're afraid to do this, that, and the other thing. And it hurt them because they weren't challenged. They weren't given strong tasks and then made to figure them out. You've got to suffer through and you've got to figure, be able to figure out stuff to be successful in life. So yes, bad things are going to happen to you. Great things are going to happen to you, but bad things will happen. Okay. No doubt about it. Okay. This has been a incredibly tough year for a lot of people and it's the people who pick themselves up and say you know what we're going to find a way to get through this and they do something about it those are the people that are going to be successful all right okay let's move on from our dojo motto to the dojo answer what is the answer oh yes sir okay or oh yes ma'am now why do we say that? Well, first of all, let's take the English part of it. The yes, sir, the yes, ma'am, that's all about respect and good manners. And we talked about that and how important that is. So we what, what we're trying to do by, by doing that, as a student myself, all we said was us. We said us. But every time we talked to our sensei, we were expected to say yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Okay? Now, what we did was we tried to put the yes sir, yes ma'am with us so that you get, it becomes a habit. You get used to it and this should be a habit. Say yes sir, yes ma'am, no sir, no ma'am to everybody. No matter what their age, what their, you know, who they are to you, say that, okay? I was at a store today, young cashier, okay? He said, uh, you know, he, he gave me my change after I bought something. He said, thank you, sir. I said, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And he says, oh, you don't have to call me, sir. I said, oh, sir. I call everybody, sir. Okay. And he just smiled. He said, thank you. So use it. Okay. It is very important. Now, where does this os come from? Okay. If you go to Japan or you, you know, run into a Japanese person, First of all, don't say us because they're going to look at you like, huh? What is that? Okay. Us is not a word in the Japanese dictionary. It is a, an expression that's used solely in martial arts. All right. And what it comes from is, well, actually there's, there's questions on what it comes from. Um, First, there is, uh, there's two, two main thoughts on it. First is os no seishin, okay, which is the spirit of os, okay? And that is what uh, this is about. So the spirit of os is that we, get, we, we give it our best. We try our best. We give it everything we got. But the word os is believed to come from one of two things. This one is the word os comes from oshi shinobu, which means to persevere whilst being pushed. In other words, somebody's pushing, you're pushing back harder. Somebody tells you, do it stronger. You give it all you got, okay? It implies a willingness to push oneself 
to the limits of your endurance, the limits of your strength, the limits of your will, and to persevere under any kind of pressure. And we will put you under pressure. We will put you under physical pressure. We will put you under mental pressure. We will put you under emotional pressure. Okay? Anybody who's tested for green belt and above has been through some of that. Anybody that's protested for brown belt and above has been through a lot of that. And anybody who's gone for black belt, they've been through a great deal of that. Okay? Yeah, Shannon's giving us a thumbs up, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay? Because that is... That is what has to happen to, again, make sure that you have to push yourself. In other words, challenge yourself or like what I was saying earlier, make you suffer so that you have to push yourself through that suffering. You have to develop the will to survive. You have to develop the will to not give up no matter what. What would happen Take it back to self-defense. What would happen if you're in a martial arts situation? You're in a self-defense situation. You get hit, punched in the face, punched in the gut. Okay, you're trying to defend yourself, and you get hurt, punched in the nose, and it hurts like, you know, crazy. Are you going to give up? Are you going to quit? Are you just going to lay down and let them beat the living mess out of you? No. We're going to persevere through that. We're going to push through the pain. That's why we put you in a lot of painful positions. Get you stronger, but push you through the pain so that you can deal with pain. And boy, there's a lot of people out there that cannot deal with pain. Okay. Smallest little thing. Oh, they're crying and they're, you know, raising all kinds of cane and, you know, they're, they're I mean, just blowing it out of proportion big time. Okay. You got to get used to some pain because there's going to be pain in life there's going to be pain and suffering and we push ourselves through it we become a better person we become stronger and in a situation of self-defense it might save a life so that's what we're trying to do we're trying to help you live through a bad situation we're trying to teach you how to push yourself through it another thing that this came from and is believed to have come from is called Onin. Onin is pushing patience, okay? Uh, in other words, pushing yourself or somebody pushing you to the and you having the patience to endure it, okay? You're gonna stick with it. You're not gonna give up, okay? You're gonna continue to come back to the dojo time and time again to give it your best effort and try to get better at something. Tonight, I was teaching, uh, for those of you that were in class, what was I trying to teach? At the end of the class, we were doing a jump, spin, crescent kick. How many did it well? I did, <laughs> okay, <laughs> no. but who, who the students did it well? Probably nobody, okay? I, I was watching on the, on the screen and I mean, they were, they were not great looking kicks, but you know what, it was something new. And as I told the class, and I, I excuse the wording here, but when you try something the first time, it's gonna suck. Okay, you're gonna be bad at it. It's normal, okay? Sucking at something, okay? Being bad at it is the first step to becoming great at it. So you've gotta get past that stage where you're not good at something because you've just learned it. You gotta do it, do it, do it, do it, do it until you get good at it, okay? And that's just, that's pushing patience. That's the idea of OS, okay? Um, what's interesting in this, O-Nin. Nin is part of the word Nin Tai, which means patience. And Shinobu is, well, wait a minute, let me go back to Nin. Also, Nin, the same, and the kanji character for Nin is the same character that's used in the word Ninja. Ninja. Okay, the ninja warrior. And Shinobu is the name, the old name for a ninja warrior. Isn't that interesting? So this came from some things that might have a little bit of a mysterious background. Interesting, huh? 
So where did us exactly come from? We don't know. It's, you know, it's kind of like in the military where, you know, in the military, they're hoo you know, or whatever, you know, they say in the different military um, branches. You know, it's just a guttural thing. You won't find it in the in the dictionary, but boy, in the military, ooh, hoo you know, they'll, they're going to say it um, because from one person to another in the military, they know what it is. I mean, it's that it's that keep going kind of uh, thing. Same thing in, in the martial arts. Us is that keep going. I'm going to keep trying. I'm doing my best. Okay. Now let's talk about the dojo kun. The dojo kun is something that uh, we do at in the advanced class. And I'm going to try to go through this quick because we're already at about an hour. And uh, so this is the dojo morals. Now, once you get to the advanced class, we instated uh, insta insta put this into the uh, advanced class so that people would learn it because this is a very important uh, principle. And the dojo kun, you know, everyone who trains in karate must come to know the dojo kun. Okay, so the dojo kun is repeated all together by the students as a reminder of why we train, just like the student creed. So the student creed is kind of like the morals of the dojo at a lower level, and the dojo kun is at a higher level. Um, the dojo kun states the basic philosophy of karate according to its founder and uh, the teacher and the, the, the person who came up with this was Master Gichin Fudokoshi, who was the first person to show Okinawa Te to the Japanese. Master Fudokoshi believed that for the true karateka, uh, karate practitioner, the dojo kun should not only be considered a set of rules of conduct in the dojo, but a guide to everyday life. So everything we learn in the dojo, we should apply to our everyday lives. So this is uh, the dojo kun. And he told Su, Jinkako kansei ni juto morokoto. One, to strive for the perfection of character. He told Su, Makoto no michio ma morokoto. One, to defend the paths of truth. So this is the, the Japanese and then the English. He told Su, Doryoko no seishi no yashinao koto. One, to foster the spirit of effort. And he told to Regi o Omonzuru Koto, to honor the principles of courtesy. He told to Keki no Yu o Nashimoro Koto, one, to guard against impetuous courage. All right, now I'm going to explain these a little bit more in depth, real quick. First of all, each one of these starts with that word, Hitotsu. Hitotsu means number one or first. All right, but they all have first. So what he did was he put all of these as the first principle. In other words, one is no more important than the other. They're all number one. They're all a principle that you must learn. So he didn't state them one, two, three, four, five. He stated them everything is first. Everything is important. And not one is more important than the other. So to strive for the perfection of character. This is the ultimate goal of karate. The other four principles of the Dojo Kun, as well as the entire uh, Dojo Kun, all tell us uh, what it means to seek perfection of character how, uh, and how we can go about pursuing the, this very high objective. But this is... But this is the most important thing. We seek perfection of character from the inside out. We, we, we must understand that it's something we should do every moment of every day of our lives. We want to be a better person. This means we should never stop learning. Karate training, like life itself, is an ongoing process of growth and personal education, a process that lasts a lifetime. It is good to set goals, but as soon as we accomplish them, it is important to set our sights on the next goal. To 
improve, to get better. To seek the perfection of character is to always seek to improve oneself, to always endeavor to, low, uh, to learn and grow. So we always want to make sure we're trying to get better. So you set yourself a goal to get the next belt, to learn the next kata. And as soon as you do, you set your goal to do go to the next one and to the next one and to the next one. So we should always be setting our goals higher and higher. Okay. He, uh, one, to defend the paths of truth. To be faithful means to be sincere in everything you do. Here we are talking about making a total effort all the time in whatever you do. To be faithful, of course, means that you have to be true to other people, to your obligations, but it also means you have to be true to yourself. And to do so means you have to do your best in everything you do. In other words, you need to look at what you're doing and saying, okay, I'm sitting on the couch, I'm watching TV. Am I bettering myself? No. Okay, I'm sitting here you know, being mindless. Okay, I need to do something to better myself. And yes, we all need some time to relax and chill out, but how much time do we do that? How much time do I spend bettering myself? Okay, when you're faithful to yourself, others will have faith in you. And this creates a mutual trust between people. Being faithful to yourself is essential to realizing the first goal of being the best person you can be. So be truthful, be truthful to yourself and to others. One, to foster the spirit of effort. All right, pretty simple. Try hard at everything you do. No matter what you are doing, whether it's training, working, a relationship, give it 100%. To do anything else is to cheat yourself and to cheat others. If you don't endeavor to do your best, you're not being faithful to yourself and others. And you're not trying to seek the perfection of character. All right? To do that, we've got to try. And we've got to try our best. Uh, one, to honor the principles of courtesy. A true martial artist must always show respect to other people. And, you know, if you look at that word up there, hitotsu regi, regi, re is like bow. Okay, so this is talking about respect. It is something you ought to feel in your heart. Showing respect is a sign of humility, and humility is necessary for an open mind, which in turn is necessary to learn and to grow. You can always learn something from every person you meet. Likewise, every person you encounter is a possible opponent of some kind, and that opponent can pose a threat to you, physical or otherwise. In either case, if you respect everyone, you will more clearly see things for what they are, and you'll be able to get the most out of every experience. All right, and the last one is to guard against impetuous courage. This is a reminder to keep calm inside. Control yourself at all times from within. Conflict within is a form of violence. We don't want to have a conflict with ourselves. It leads to violent actions, which is something you should try to avoid at all costs. A martial artist should always be in control, and that begins with an inner calmness with peace of mind. I say many times, you've got to be control in control of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. And if you lose any one of those three things in a self-defense situation, you'll lose the fight. If you lose control of your physical abilities, you don't know what to do, you know, you, 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 you freeze up and you, you can't do your, do your moves, you've lost physical control. If you forget what to do, you know, you're, you're letting the fear get in your way and you're, you know, worried about things and you're scared or whatever, you're going to lose mental control because you're not going to be able to think very well. If you can't think good on the fly, you're going to lose the fight. And third, emotional control. We can't get mad. We can't get upset. We can't get frightened. We can't get scared. You got to stay calm. And so you got to have those three things, mental, physical, and emotional control. If you're forced to defend yourself as a last resort, then it is all right to do so. 
okay? But you will only be successful depending, uh, defending yourself when you maintain a calm, clear mind, in which case using karate technique to protect yourself will truly be your reaction of last resort. So in other words, we'll only use it if we have to, okay? All right, so these are our morals and philosophies of the dojo, and I hope you've taken some notes and written some things down and remember these, because like I said, you may see these on a uh, test coming up in the, in the future for yourself, okay? Uh, did anybody have any questions about tonight's lecture? I don't hear any, so I guess everybody's kind of got it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it, and I enjoyed teaching it. So, guys, have a great night, and I look forward to seeing you in class later this week, all right? Okay, thank you, guys. Us.